thank you. Oh, she's so nice. I could do this every night. I don't get treated like this at home or anywhere in the <laughs> office. <laughs> I think being a politician would be fun. You guys really get So, Helen, um, I just want to thank you, along with everybody else, for your great service. You've just been wonderful city councilwoman and just done a great job and really appreciate your willing to risk running for mayor as a woman. And um, so uh, it's very exciting. So I guess my question to you is that this job as mayor is probably as complex as it's ever been given everything that's going on and you know the city and the world and everywhere. And um, you know, your background really has been, you know, primarily government education. I sort of think about this as a corporate job and being the CEO of a very complex organization and where your leadership skills, your ability to attract top talent, to motivate, inspire, energize, but more important than anything is to bring an organization together that's been through, you know, a lot of trauma. And this is happening in corporate America everywhere and I'm in the business of helping some of these companies find people to work through that and so you know I think in this election in this day and age the skill set and your you know would love to hear how would you get us back on the right track bring us together provide the leadership and what would be your solutions, what's the bottom line? You know, how are you going to solve poverty? How are you going to solve unemployment? And how are you going to solve education? I mean, you got 10 minutes left. Okay. No. <laughs> For all of them. Well, good evening, everybody. And it's a wonderful time to be here. And thank you to the citizen. Thank you so much, um, everybody, for spending your evening with me. Um, and Judy, thank you also as well for being a fearless champion of women in, in elected office and in leadership all across the city of Philadelphia. So I think your question comes down to, you know, I've got 30 years of experience inspiring and leading the city towards wanting to make change. And I did this largely without political titles or power. Um, the world that I come out of I don't bring political titles to, the t to be invited to the table. What I do bring is a different kind of skill set. I know how to build and mobilize unusual types of coalitions of people who can actually go out there and exhort for change. I know how to bring really smart and innovative policy solutions to really sticky situations. Um, and I have a relentless focus on actually fixing problems that change the ways in which people live. And I wanna make sure that those are the people who are able to say that something is different today than it was yesterday. That to me is one of the big things. It's one of the reasons that I just don't do, uh, you know, before I ever came into office, I would say, you know, that's how I got the Philadelphia Parking Authority to pay the first money to our public schools in years and years and years. I walked into one of the most dangerous high schools in the state that had been on a list time and time again, and we turned it around because we organized young people to hold a school system accountable for a safe learning environment, which is literally the most essential thing that they needed to get in education. I don't ever accept half-assed ideas to fix really big problems, and I think because of that, people around me get better. I think that I really value people at every level of an organization because I think they, they have a critical role to play about how to transform things. It's not just about a top-down edict issuing, you know, somebody just declaring things left and right. It's really about getting people at all levels of your organization to buy into something that they never did before because they're ultimately the ones that are going to be able to deliver on that. And then finally, you know, I think uh, the biggest thing is that I am just, uh, you know, you probably heard that I'm pretty relentless <laughs> and uh, I probably should sleep more, but you know, um, I think that that is the kind of stuff that, that I'm bringing to the table each and every day. And I think it's what's enabled me to do things even when I didn't have the political title and power to do it. And when I was on council, I was able to show what I could do. 
Um, but as mayor, I intend to lead with that same kind of leadership and vision to take on the city's biggest problems and to prove that we actually never had to live like this, that we could fix the things that held us back. So, so given where we are today in the city and the problems and the challenges that we face, what would you say are the top three positions that would be the most important for you to fill in your administration? And how would you hold them accountable? Yep, so my managing director, no question. I think that there will be the police commissioner, no question. And um, the next education secretary, officer, or whomever, because I have been very clear from day one that this city will not succeed unless we bring our city and our school system together. Every mayor before me has effectively either turned their back on our public schools or has failed to fulfill the promise of what education can be. And I will be that mayor that is going to make sure that our city and our schools are going to rise together because I do not see it happening any other way. That is a common mission um, and I think that we're gonna deliver that. Now, you know, how do we hold them accountable? I've said very clearly, um, all roads lead to the mayor. I think it's about having a clear mission, a vision, um, it's about a select set of priorities, not 10,000 things all at once, but if safety, cleanliness of our city, and the education and well-being of our kids are our top priorities right now, then let's get to work and make it happen and make sure that everybody within the organization knows they have a critical role to play to make that possible. I love that you're so specific. So now I'm going to ask you another question that I hope you'll be equally specific about, and it's the... Uh the enormous crime problem we have. What exactly would you do about it and what would your time frame be for getting it back to where we could all be comfortable again? Yeah, I mean, I think that all of us are um, grieving the loss of Officer Chris Fitzgerald um, and I hope that his legacy will be a safer city. And, you know, I've been very clear that I intend to deliver by um, taking action, that there are things that we have to do right away. That's why I've called for a day one state of emergency. We've talked about the coordination of pulling all of our city agencies together, zeroed in on key areas like taking illegal guns off of our streets and creating a multi-federal state county task force to help us do that. It's about making sure that we are zeroed in on 911 response times because right now, you know, if you call for help, everyone should know that help is on the way. And we have the second highest 911 response times in the country, and that is just not acceptable. And, um, you know, that third area is really making sure that we get officers and other people out onto the streets with a visible presence of both restoring public trust, but also keeping eyes out for people and letting them know that people are not alone right now. But I'm also really clear that as much as we're gonna talk about all of this, um, protections and crime, the fundamental root causes of the things that we are dealing with have a lot to do with the failure of investment that happens in communities that are deeply racked by violence. Um, you can see it from the moment a child walks out of their door, um, from the fact that they pass by streets that are you know, beyond filthy and dirty, be, because of the fact that we see vacant lots and all these types of things. There are actually immediate things that we can do that are investment-based, that aren't just about you know, leaning into the fear and all the other things that, you know, that have defined this conversation about safety, but is actually about investing in communities that have been too far left behind. And I, I wanna say this, I don't think any of that stuff is like long-term. Those are immediate responses. Cleaning and brightening up streets is an immediate response to crime in dangerous neighborhoods that are dark and frightening and filthy right now. Um, and, and there is plenty of research and work by Eugenia South that, that proves all of that. Um, I want to make sure that we're dealing with mental health and, you know, adequate treatment and supports. It's one of the reasons why I fought to make sure that there were, we piloted the first non-police mental health crisis response units so that police officers could respond to the issues that people wanted them to respond to and trained EMTs and first responders and med mental health specialists can respond to those that are being requested by the individuals asking for them. Um, we know that that works, and, and that's 
deeply important. And, um, you know, I, I am obviously just going to be deeply concerned about what's happening to young people. Um, I think today, before we walked in, we just read about another two children who were harmed by gun violence on their way home from school. And it is shocking that we've had over 90 uh, young people being hurt by gun violence um, since the year started. And I have been very clear that, like, we just cannot have this... Parents cannot be afraid to send their children to school. And so I want to see our city zeroed in on safe passages to and from school so that children can be assured that they are safe heading and coming back from um, the most important institution to them, and that is getting their education. Thank you. My final question is, what do you, what do you see are the key obstacles um, that are preventing um, you making these changes, and why is it? Why aren't? Why is it more happening? Why is this dragging on so much? I mean, what are we missing? Is it resources? Is it, you know, bad communications? I mean, why this has been going on far too long? What do you, what do you see as the challenges, and what are you going to do to pick up the pace here? Well, picking up the pace is definitely something that I am uh, definitely something that I am always uh, invested in, and uh, you know, kind of known for. Last name Kim. You know. um, so, you know, I would say that uh, a lot of the problems that we have in the city are largely because there are so many different agencies that are largely outside the purview of city control. Um, you know, when you talk about, and it's really almost every big thing that we can think of, whether it's housing, whether it's safety, whether it's education, you're talking about multiple agencies that are responsible that are largely outside of the direct control of a mayor. So the mayor's power and the mayor's responsibility right now is not just to convene, but to actually coordinate and mobilize people towards action and inspire them to be part of a unified response system, even if they may not be directly accountable to that mayor. That takes a very different skill set than what many people are used to be having. Um, and I also think that it takes a different kind of leader. Um, you know, I have, uh, you know, since we just um, ended eagle season, right? So, you know, I think some people want to be somebody, like they just want to be a mayor. And I don't know, you know, I sometimes think that some mayors think that they are quarterbacks on a team. And I've just never felt that, um, you know, a mayor is the quarterback for me. You know, it's not some kind of um, glass jawed Tom Brady type, you know, who doesn't want to get hit. Like, to me, like, a, you know, the mayor is your offensive line, right? You're taking the hits you're making the tackles, and at the end of the day, your team runs through. Not you, but your team makes it across the finish line, and that is either your school kids or it's people who deserve housing in this city, it's children who deserve uh, a real opportunity, young people looking for a job, a parent asking themselves whether this is a place to call home. Like To me, those are the people that have to make it across, and I do think that a lot of mayors maybe want to be somebody um, and don't realize how many hits you actually have have to take um, in order for the city to rise. But I think I'm that kind of person. <laughs>